Hi, I'm Parker and I'm going to guide you through building your first grid of objects in Fusion. It's super flexible and easy to get started. It's just two events and a single loop. There are lots of uses for grids from sprite sheets to platforms in the platform game, but the basics always start with rendering your objects on a grid. If you'd like to see more of these tutorials, let me know what you'd like in the comments. You can also find the link to the project file in the description. Let's head over to the frame editor. Now we're over in the frame editor, we're going to want to add an object we want to render on the grid and set it up for the event editor. So first, insert a new object and for this example, we'll select an active object. Once inserted, select your object to reveal its properties. Over in the properties editor, we need to set up a couple of things so that our object behaves how we expect. The first thing we need to do is stop the object being created at the start of the frame. To do that, I can select the runtime options tab and deselect create at start. Next, we want to select the values tab and add a new named alterable value. And for this example, we will name it ID. This will be used to identify each object from its duplicates that we create on a loop. Finally, I will import some art into my active object. This isn't important to the project, but I wanted to make it look nice. I'll be working in the event list editor for this tutorial, but you're welcome to use the event editor. The first thing we need to do is create objects that we want to put on the grid. The frame I'm working on is 640 pixels wide and 480 pixels tall. My sprite is 32 pixels square and will fit into the frame 20 times horizontally and 15 times vertically. To fill this frame, we will need 20 times 15, which is 300 objects. Let's add a start to frame event then once we have that, we will start a loop on this event. To do that, click on the special object, select fast loops, and then start a loop. We'll name the loop create grid and press enter. Next, we want to run the loop the number of times we need objects for the grid. For this example, that is 300. Now we need to add the code that will run on every loop. In this code, we'll create the active object, give it a unique ID, and then position it based on this ID. Let's start with creating the active object. First, we need an event that checks for each iteration of the fast loop and runs the code. To add this, click on the special object and select on loop. Now we need to add the code that creates the object on each loop. We can do that by selecting new objects and create new object. Go ahead and select the active and then create it anywhere in the frame. Don't worry, we'll position it with code. We'll give each object a unique ID by setting the alterable value ID that we gave the object earlier to the loop index. In this example, that will produce a number from 0 to 299. To do that, we will set the ID value to the loop index of the create grid loop using the following code. To set the X position of our active object on each loop, we'll use a simple equation to figure out where each tile will be placed on the grid. It'll be grid X cell position times its cell size. The cell size in this instance is 32 pixels, and to find the X cell position, we can do another simple bit of maths to get the data from the ID we set earlier. So we can use the equation ID mod 20. We are using the mod function on the active object ID to find the X position on a grid that is 20 cells wide. So when we put that all together, we get something that looks like this. To get the grid Y position, we will use a similar formula, but this time we will divide the number of cells in the width of the grid. So now when we run the app, we should get a grid of actives that fill the frame. Here we can see the code created 300 active objects and assigned them all an X and a Y position based on a grid of 20 by 15. That's it. Once you have your grid, you can work with it in many ways to create renders of sprite sheets, platforms in a platform game, or tiles in a puzzle game. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you need any further help, let me know in the comments. Download the source for this tutorial, the link is in the description. Bye bye now!